Welcome to day three of the Canada-wide Science Fair. Last night we found out who the big award winners are of the fair. Let's go inside and check some out. Up ahead, we'll find the three big winners of the Canada-wide Science Fair. We have the best senior project, the best junior project, and the best in fair. Let's check some out. Welcome to the three of you. Congratulations. Uh, that, was, uh, that was quite a night last night. Isla, you're our best, uh, our best junior uh, uh, finalist, our platinum winner for best junior. Um, what was the problem you were trying to solve? So my project was on the Great Lakes piping plovers and they're an endangered species right now. And so I was basically trying to see whether beach maintenance, which is raking the beach of vegetation and debris, is affecting their natural habitat. Yeah, so my final conclusions were raking the rack line um, could potentially put the species at risk more than it is right now. And what's a rack line? Uh, the rack line is like the high water mark that contains sorts of uh, debris and driftwood. Perfect. Great. Thanks. Okay, so Bavia, give us a bit of a sense of uh, the problem you were trying to solve and, uh, and what, uh, what you were working on. Yeah, for sure. Um, so in my ch the challenge that I was trying to tackle was the challenge that exists with current immunotherapies. So immunotherapy has shown great results in terms of treating cancer. However, with current immunotherapies, the big challenges are the fact that, one, they're expensive, um, they're less effective, and also they can cause other diseases. So um, in my project, I created an alternative um, using DNA to actually solve these concerns. That's great. With your project, in terms of uh, what you're hoping to do for the world, what, is there a word you could use to sum that up? The one word that I would use is hope. Um, I would definitely want every patient around the world to actually have um, the opportunity of one, have a safe treatment against cancer, and also to also be able to afford cancer er, treatments. So those are some of the main ideas that I would want to go for. Okay, great. Thanks very much. So Bavia was the uh, best project winner uh, for Canada Wide Science Fair 2019, and Manning, Manning Whitby from Toronto. Um, give us a bit of background on, on your project. What was the problem you were trying to solve? So, so the tools that are currently available for navigation for those with blind and visually impairedness are very limited and do not provide them with all the information they need to navigate effectively, gracefully, and collision-free. Uh, and so the biggest issue is exploration and the ability for them to travel independently. And so the device was designed to give them that freedom, allow them to navigate their environment with greater independence, confidence, and comfort. So is there a word you could use to sort of sum up your project? Uh, the biggest issue, or the word I would say for that population is isolation. And the device aims to bring them and reintegrate them back into society. Perfect. That's great. Thanks very much. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, Bavia Mohan from Ottawa, Ontario, the uh, uh, best project winner for Canada-wide Science Fair uh, 2019. Manning Whitby from Toronto, Ontario, the uh, uh, best senior project at the fair, and uh, Isla Graham from Blue Water, Ontario, kind of an Ontario sweep here, I guess, uh, uh, from Blue Water, Ontario, uh, our best junior winner. Let's uh, give all three of our top winners a hand, and thanks very much for, uh, for joining us today at the Meet the Winners panel. Hello everyone, so I am a student from Thailand and my name is Naranya Rutunawit. I'm Manas Kawin Pupin Yokun, I come from Thailand. Wonderful, okay, and in like 30 seconds, can you walk us through what you guys did for your project? So we did a biodegradable nursery bag from the agricultural waste. Actually, this is an ordinary nursery bag from the plastic. As you know that it will harmful with the environment and um, so it can cause the global warming. This is the reason why we invented the biodegradable nursery bag from soybean meal and, agri uh, sorry, and water highest in fiber. So soybean meal contains the high levels of nitrogen and soybean... Uh, and, uh, Sorry, and the water has, in, um, has some benefit to reinforce the material becomes the sheet, to the sheet becomes stronger. So we combine it all together to make the biodegradable nursery bag, which, which can decompose under the ground by itself. Approximately by six months, um, all of the bag will disappear. 
So the nitrogen from the soybean meal will absorb into the plants and it will make the plant grow well, especially in tomato plants. Wow, that's amazing. So is this your guys' first visit to Canada? Um, we have been visit here twice uh, in another competition last year in Toronto. Very cool. So what's been your favorite part about the Canada-wide science fair so far? Um, the favorite part in Canada Wide Science Fair, I think that is the um, everyone, all the participants, all the ambassadors, everyone makes our town become one very wonderful. Yeah. So I met many friends here, and this is a very precious experience for me. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, same too. <laughs> yeah, I'm very funny and enjoy in this competition. Amazing. Okay. Well, um, do you guys want to look into the camera and say I love science? <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, two, three. I love, I love science. science. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. On to the next project. <laughs> Thank you very much. You. Bye bye. <laughs> Parfait. En fait, je m'appelle Hugo Hutt, je viens du Québec et en fait, comme vous pouvez voir ici, c'est mon projet, un drone de sauveteur entièrement autonome. En gros, comment ça marche, c'est euh, grâce à un quadrillage GPS, il va pouvoir scanner une zone spécifique, prédéterminée. Ensuite, grâce à la reconnaissance d'objets, il va pouvoir faire la reconnaissance de personnes en dessous du drone. Par la suite, pour s'assurer que la personne est bel et bien en danger, il va utiliser la reconnaissance de mouvement pour euh, différencier une personne qui nage et une personne qui est en danger. Par la suite, lorsqu'il va confirmer que c'est une personne qui est bel et bien en danger et qui a besoin d'aide, euh, il va larguer un gilet de sauvetage qui est juste ici. Et par la suite, grâce à la puce GPS qui est juste en dessous, il va envoyer par message SMS les coordonnées GPS aux autorités locales, ainsi qu'une image de la détection pour avoir un visuel de ce que les autorités vont chercher. Awesome. OK. And so can you tell us a little bit about what your favorite part of the fair has been so far? Fait en fait, moi, ce que j'ai vraiment apprécié de la compétition, c'est vraiment le niveau de complexité des projets. Moi, je savais que mon, mon projet était complexe, mais quand j'ai regardé les autres projets, j'ai vraiment été impressionné par la qualité, l'implication des projets qui, et que les autres personnes ont, ont fait. Okay. Awesome. OK. After three whole days of STEM Expo, the kids are still just as excited to be here and experiencing all the cool science and engineering that we have here in Canada. We're having over 7,500 school kids come and visit STEM Expo. And look, they're all still here. Let's check out some of the boots. Hello, who are you? Hi, my name is Jake and I'm a professional tree climber. That is very cool. And who do you work for, professional tree climber? I work for the city of Fredericton. My job title actually is an arborist. Um, I'm an internationally certified arborist and a registered professional forester as well. So I, I didn't just jump out of the bed and climb a tree. I had to get some schooling and some education. Um, I love my job. It keeps me in good shape. I work outside every day and get to meet lots of nice people. So what does a professional tree climber do for the city of Fredericton? Um, well, my job is, one, just to observe the trees around the city. I can recognize when some trees are getting ill and sick and they may be in need of care. Um, so that's one thing, it's just recognizing that they need help and work. Um, other than that, I actually physically climb and cut and I work a bucket truck and chip trucks and chainsaws. And, very cool, and I'm sure you get this all the time, but do you have a favorite tree? Yeah, I do. I like, uh, I like the, the elm tree, Fredericton's elm tree, the American white elm. They're beautiful, they're shaped like a big vase, umbrella-shaped tree, tall, mighty, strong. Yeah. So topical to that is uh, there is a disease that's affecting elm trees. Did you get a chance to check out any of the projects upstairs? Did you see any that looked at uh, some of the diseases affecting trees? Yeah, no, I, I did. There's, it's really amazing to see the way that uh, kids think about things differently than I would or the way I've seen in some research in the past, some new approaches to some old problems, really interesting. Um, we have... Uh, to add to Dutch elm disease, we have the emerald ash borer coming through town. That's going to pose a lot of problems, and we need help from kids, some smart minds, to help combat this uh, this uh, beetle. Yeah, absolutely. So, when kids come and visit you today, what do you hope that they take away from the booth? I hope that they they learn something at least. That they recognize that. Uh, well, that they learn something. If it's just that, uh, hey, friction. 
is is a big thing in my job. Hey, a, a pulley. Oh wow, pulleys make work easier. Yeah. Little things like that. Um, oh, I like the reaction of oh, there's you, you climb trees professionally. Like I didn't know you could do that. Awesome. Thank you so much. My name is Dominic Trombley, and I'm an education consultant. Wow, what an interesting title. How does one get a job as such as an education consultant? <laughs> well, an education consultant, you first need to be a teacher and have a lot of experience in the classroom to be able to support other teachers in bringing innovative teaching practices in their, in their classroom. Very cool. So how long were you a teacher? I was a teacher for 13 years, and I had my own business for 10 years now. Wow, that's amazing. And what do you think is the most rewarding part about being able to help teachers with their educational practice? Well, I feel the most rewarding part is when you go in the classroom, you show them new techniques and new ideas, and then they text you like two days later and say, I tried that and it worked. It's kind of fun to see that they integrate the new ideas that you bring to their classroom. Very cool. So can you walk us through one of these innovative techniques that you bring to the classroom? Definitely. I'll show you my little robot here. Okay, so we're using this robot because it has a marker in between the two wheels so it can draw. As you can see, we have a triangle with three equal sides. We all know that it means three angles of 60 degrees. What the student would code on the iPad here using a coding software is move in a straight line. Now, most students would say turn 60 degrees, which is a mistake here because if you turn 60 degrees, it will draw a line like this. You actually need to turn 120 degrees to get 60 degrees. So it's very interesting because students, you let them make mistakes and they learn from their mistake. And this is one little example of all the math and science concept that you can cover using robotics. Very cool. So what do you think or what do you hope when teachers and students come and chat with you today? What do you want them to take away from your booth? For the students, I want them to have fun and say, I love robotics, ask their teachers to do more of that kind of stuff in the classroom, because I feel by uh, solving problems using robots, you better retain this information. Because when it's just math on paper, you do it because your teacher asks you to do it. But in this case, there's an objective for doing maths. Uh, for teachers, I really hope they book a workshop, <laughs> dominictrombley.com. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, so um, now I want you to look into the camera, and for the students who aren't here today, I want you to give them a message about the importance of science in true Dominic fashion. So science is so important because you need to understand what's happening. We make a lot of decisions uh, in our lives, uh, in politics, we vote, and we need to be informed. And even though we're not full scientists and we don't do all degrees in science, we need to have this basic understanding of science to make proper decisions in our lives. And now, in French. Alors, ce qui est super important, c'est d'avoir une littératie scientifique. Même si on ne va pas à l'université pour faire des études en sciences, c'est important d'avoir une compréhension des sciences suffisante pour être capable de, faire, de prendre des bonnes décisions, que ce soit pour euh, le vote lorsqu'on a des élections ou dans notre propre vie, afin de faire des bons choix qui sont basés sur des faits scientifiques. All right, thank you so much. So that brings us to the end of both these videos and Canterwide Science Fair 2019, both the Project Zone Upstairs and the STEM Expo, which I'm standing in right now. We want to thank all of the finalists who made this week possible by coming and sharing their amazing projects, and of course, to all of the exhibitors here at STEM Expo who helped share some of the excellent science here in Canada. Of course, we also want to thank all of the school students and their teachers who came to explore all of the wonderful science being presented by the finalists and the exhibitors, and to all of the volunteers, the City of Fredericton, the University of New Brunswick, and all the people who made this fantastic week possible. This afternoon, the students are going to take down their projects and start to head home to all the different corners of Canada that they call home. But we hope that they return home with a renewed passion for science, and to remember that science affects our lives in many different ways every single day. We want them to stay curious and continue to explore the world around them, which has been the main message that we've heard from all of the different exhibitors and the finalists themselves. We want them to return home with their new friendships and their new passion and continue to explore as the future is in great hands. Thank you so much to everyone who made this week possible. And as always, we all love science here at the Canterwide Science Fair. We'll see you next year in Edmonton for Canterwide Science Fair 2020. We can run away, we don't gotta stay. I can feel it, it burns inside Take away the pain, we can go insane I can feel the